So next up on the list is the drive shaft. So as you can tell by this one, the boots are toast. The shaft would work well for a while, but once grit gets in here, they're gonna go downhill pretty quick. I'll keep these as backup spares, probably keep one long and one short, the best of the, of the ones that I've got um, in my bag for trail repairs, but again, realistically, they're in need of replacement. For $8 a pair, can't really go wrong. Now these are seized into the bearings with rust, and unfortunately the outer part is what I want to keep. The bearings I won't be keeping because they're so rusty, but it just won't come apart. So I've sprayed a little bit of PB Blaster penetrating oil in here to hopefully break some of the connection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in a vise, not squeezing anything, just spread out so the drive shaft can pass down through. And I'm going to carefully hit the end with a hammer. Now unfortunately, I don't have the right size nut to install on here. If you did, I would completely, 100% recommend install a nut on here so you don't mess up the threads with your hammer. So without further ado, I'm going to put that in the vise, knock these drive shafts out, and then we can go ahead and look into how to take the joints out and install them in the new drive shafts. Alrighty, as you can see the drive shafts are now freed from the hubs, and if we look at the drive shafts here on the end, the bearings did not get stuck on the inside, so that's good. So the bearings are all stuck inside of the hubs. We'll deal with those later, so now we'll set that to the side. Now we're going to focus on the drive shafts. We'll start with the broken one, so that gives us a smaller piece to manage. And this has what's called a CV joint in it. As you can see, it allows it to rotate while at an angle. And if you flap it over to one side, you're able to see a small set screw. It looks like a 1.5 millimeter on that one. That's actually quite small. So we're going to take our 1.5 millimeter driver, try to crack that free. Now this pin should be able to slide out because the set screw was locking that in place. A little bit of wiggling, a little bit of pushing. It'll come free. There we go. Now that's free. As you can see, the pin has a very small groove, and that's what the set screw sets into. And then the barrel slides out, and that's what the pin went through and the set screw threaded into. These, as you can tell, the boots are in way better condition, nice and pliable. You don't want to yank on it and rip it, but they're good. Now the boots are glued on. They are replaceable though. It's pretty cheap. I think it's about two or three dollars for replacement boots, a pair of them. But since it's glued, it's a pretty big pain in the butt to change. If you ever want to in the future, I can go ahead and rebuild my old shafts with new boots, but for the effort, I'm just going to get new ones. Much easier. As you can see from the state of this rag, I had a little bit of a Loctite mishap in between cuts there. So we're going to go ahead and try that again. I'm going to take your new shaft and your old parts and go ahead and assemble them exactly the opposite of they came apart. Slide that barrel in, put that inside of the drive shaft, and if you look straight down inside, you can see everything line up. You want to make sure it's lined up before you try putting this pin in, because even with everything lined up, you're going to have to jimmy stuff around a little to get it to work out right. And if it's not even close to lined up in the first place, you're going to be struggling an awful lot. So the next, we're going to get our set screw set onto the screwdriver, the tiny grub screw. There's actually a little bit of Loctite on the outside of this tube here. We'll just scoop some of that up on the side of the screw. Not much, just a little. Goes a long way. And we're going to go ahead and thread that in. And we're going to make it snug. Not overly tight, though, because the Loctite will handle that. That's snug. And now that is one assembled joint. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I've discovered why the joints were stiff. Down here in this groove, the sides are mushroomed out a little bit from wear, and it's making this joint super stiff because it's interfering with the plastic. So I ended up deciding the way things were just wasn't acceptable. So I tore back into it and I used the grinding wheel on the Dremel to go ahead and remove the extra material here. And now things work much more smoothly. Really happy with that fitment now on both joints on both shafts. So, now the drive shafts are done, we can go ahead and revisit these hubs. And we're going to remove the bearings. I'm going to go ahead and place on the inside, sitting against the bearing. And you can just tap it against the table or with a hammer, whatever you like. And the one bearing will come right out. 
on the other bearing, if we flip it over, yep, we can see a little bit of a lip in there. It's not a lot to work with though. So I'm going to take a 2.5 mil driver because you're going to have a hard time damaging that tool. I'm going to use that to knock the other bearing free. It's definitely better or more correct tools to use for this. But this gets the job done. And I make sure to be careful so I don't ruin my tools by using them for the wrong time. Now that we have these bearings out, which are you know, reasonably smooth, but very dirty, and sure, it's only a matter of time before they fail, I'm going to pair them up against some fast eddy bearings and get a brand new setup. Alrighty, so I went ahead and got out the bearings I needed, including an extra one for the other hub. I'm just going to take a rag real quick and wipe off some of the extra penetrating fluid from here when early, from earlier when I was removing the drive shafts from the rusty bearings. All right, now it's just a matter of reinstalling the new bearings. The outer one's pretty easy. It's flush right there, you can just press in with your thumb. The one on the inside may go easily, or if it doesn't want to seat right, you're gonna have to get clever because it's kind of deep in there. I'm actually seated really easily. I'm gonna go ahead and use my 2.5 mil driver anyways, and a few spots around the edge to make sure it's pressed in fully. And it is, good. The next thing that we're gonna go ahead and service is the rocker arm bearings. These are in there pretty tight, so what you're going to do is put a 8mm wrench on the bottom there, and you need a 2.5mm um, Allen key. I'm using an Allen key instead of my nut driver just to get some more leverage on here, and go ahead and bust that free. Once it's cracked loose, you can go ahead and use your nut driver to finish it off, so it's a lot more convenient and faster. That loose, you can go ahead and pull out the stud. Then we're just going to have to knock these bearings out of here real quick. This is definitely a less crucial part of the build, but since I got the full bearing kit, I'm going to replace them anyways. Into the bin with those, and simply pop in the new ones. Now we're going to want to make sure to put in the bearing or the, excuse me, the stud the same way that it was. Just like so. Nice tight fit. We're going to get a little bit of Loctite on this M4 screw here. Again, not too much, but enough. Thread that on, and again, we have to use the wrench to keep the stud from spinning while we thread into it. Again, not exceptionally tight, the Loctite will handle it as long as it's snug. And now that is also rebuilt and good to go. One thing that I'm going to neglect to do for now is the shocks. There's two reasons for that. I don't have a shock rebuild kit, and I hate doing shocks. I will be doing these because the rear ones especially, I noticed, have almost no dampening left to them at all, so they are pretty thoroughly toast. But I don't want to deal with them. They're a pain in the butt. I'll probably do these off camera because there's nothing to be learned from me rebuilding shocks. It is a disaster when I do it. I'm going to go ahead and get the drive shaft bolted back onto the differential. Now you do not need to use Loctite for this because Loctite is for metal on metal contact. This set screw is going into a plastic drive shaft. So it's going to be held in just from the friction with the plastic. No need for Loctite. You could if you want, I suppose, but in my opinion, there's no need. <clears throat> and then we're going to begin trying to remember exactly how this goes into the housing. I believe it went about this way. Alrighty, so I decided to get a little bit of work done off camera so I could start to get my bearings on, going on. What's going, how this is going to go together exactly. All I've been doing is looking at the exploded diagram and piecing it together as best I can. All I've done is attached the hinge pins and upper control arms, this aluminum plate on the front here, and the two halves of the lower chassis support, I guess you would call it, that houses the differential and its housing. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the lower control arms and compare those to the images on the exploded diagram and go ahead and get these. 
lined up in the differential. For this it requires short pins instead of one long one. Go ahead and get both sides going here. Comment down below anything you'd like to see done differently on future videos. Because if I don't hear anything, I guess I'm just going to carry on with this style. Because it is what I'm thinking to do. Got some pins in the rear here. So that's the lower control arms installed. The trick here is lining up this drive shaft as I slide it all together. Now, this may or may not have truth to it, but a little bit of wisdom I've been told is when you assemble a drive shaft, you want the yokes to be in line with one another in order to reduce vibrations. Whether it's true or not, I tend to do it. It makes it a little bit more difficult because you have to pay attention to your orientation a bit more when assembling. But if the end result performs even the littlest bit better, it's worth it in my opinion. Well, it does appear that one thing I can go ahead and get knocked out is installing these rocker arms. Because they're just going to install right here into the differential support housing. So, due to the battery on my 4 volt drill dying, I'm going to be using this 18 volt drill, which of course introduces a much higher risk of stripping out the plastic. So what I'm going to do is set the clutch to its lowest setting, and the speed to its lowest setting, and I'm also just generally going to be quite careful. So now I can finally install this shock tower and it has a little groove here which fits over the shifter linkage so we have to make sure it snaps into there without bending it. So now looking at the diagram which I have to flip back to of the front exploded assembly, we can find out what size screws we need to use. And It looks like I actually missed these four main screws that hold the chassis down are all 4x14. So these four are going to get installed. They all require a 2.5 millimeter driver. I'm guessing they'll be too tight to do by hand, so I'll have to use the power tool. But I'll get them started by hand, just to make sure they're not cross-threading. Looks like I need a 4x12, which would be that shorter one I saw earlier. So as you can see, it's starting to look like a summit front end again, but there's still plenty to do. So, let's go ahead and snake this wire through here. It's so old and brittle, it's actually starting to flake apart, but for now I'll keep using it. Not the brightest move, but it's what's going to happen. And now is a good time to go ahead and flip the truck back over and start taking a look at assembling the bottom end. It's going to be things like our steering and the final bits of chassis. For example, on the front we have this little skid plate which slides over our hinge pins and then screws into place with some M3 by 10 cat head screws which look like these guys. Again, once you've been in this hobby for a while, you can generally estimate the size of a screw by looking at it. Now some people might be wondering why I'm not taking this opportunity to upgrade my skid plates to, say, aluminum. There's a pretty good reason for that. Aluminum isn't slippery, especially once it gets scratched up. It's going to catch on the rocks. This plastic, on the other hand, is very slippery, even when it's scratched to all hell. So, long term, this is the better choice. Sure, it's not nearly as pretty, and it can crack, but it's going to perform better. So for now, I'm going to leave the old scratched up plastic. So 
it's a little bit hard to tell exactly what I have to do next by the exploded view. So this is where I'm going to start to kind of Tetris things together and kind of guess how they go myself. It's clear that this skid plate is the last step. What I've got left is the steering assembly and these two cross braces. And I'm not quite sure what order they go in. So I'm going to sort of lay things in there and see what seems right. So I can see that there's two holes here on the chassis that are countersunk, and this cross piece has slight protrusions, whereas the other one doesn't. Overall, this seems perfectly symmetrical, so it shouldn't matter which way I put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in, and it feels like it's home. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our diagram, and find where this piece is on here, that I can determine which screws hold it in. Three by 10 screws, these guys once again. I'm gonna go ahead and screw that down. And this one is very tall, so I think it's gonna go over the steering assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the steering assembly in now. And then we are going to go ahead and put this crossover piece Right like this. Yep, that seems right. And what screws hold that guy in? More 3 by 10s What a surprise. Now we're going to take a look at installing this piece here. We're installing an M3 by 30 button head screw in here for the steering. That goes in there real deep, wow. And it snugs up nicely, that's always a reassuring feeling. The steering seems happy. And I left the screws for the steering installed in the servos so that they wouldn't go missing. I go ahead and crack those loose, wow they're tight. I like the double shear servo horn that they've got going on here. That is definitely an improvement over your standard single shear horn. although it's still attached to the servo itself in a traditional fashion. I've also never had an RC with a dual steering setup, so this is pretty cool. I know it's common on a lot of Traxxas vehicles, but I've never had a bigger Traxxas truck. Hence why I traded away a pretty nice slash 4x4. Just wanted to try something different. And also, hopefully, this makes somewhat entertaining content for you guys. Especially once I'm able to get it out on the trails. I'm going to go ahead and flip this back over. Now I did say that I had some new chrome coming for this front bumper. But I don't mind taking this back off to install that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stick this back on the truck. Actually, looking closer now, it appears as if this has been glued together at some point. So I may want to consider a new bumper altogether because they're not very expensive and it would certainly look better than this all torn up. But for now, I'll work with what I've got. Go ahead and slide it in there. That's where these longer M3 by 25 button head screws are going to come in. Slide into there. They slide almost all the way down, so you don't have to do a whole ton of threading, even though they're very long screws. I'm going to go ahead and snake this wire back to the other side. Again, trying not to bend it too much because it is pretty fragile feeling. If I remember right, it actually came out through here. So I'm going to plug this back in for my lights and tuck it into its little clip, which also that is quite loose. It's not a good clip. that will be a, another good reason to get a new bumper. Have that held in more securely. So now that all that's assembled, I've pretty much got as much as I can do done. I'm actually going to go ahead and chuck the drive shafts in it, just because. This is a metal-on-metal -metal contact for these drive shafts, so you will want to use a little bit of Loctite. Again, a little bit. No reason to go crazy with it. Go. 
go. Nicely installed. I'm going to go ahead and take this to dab some of the excess thread lock. And now for the other side. Grab my other set screw, get it on the driver, get a little bit of the excess Loctite from the outside of the container, waste not, want not, and all that. Go ahead and slip that into there. And no ex excess on there, that's appreciable. So that's pretty much all I had for now. The summit is coming back together. Still waiting on a few more parts. And of course got the entire transmission and rear end to go through still. And there's a lot more new parts in that bag that we haven't touched yet. So you know there's a lot more coming. Please comment down below if you have any suggestions on how I could do these videos differently. Or if there's anything you'd like to see me do with this, with this truck. Um, and if you liked the video, Leave it a like, I suppose, but if you leave a dislike, please, uh, constructive criticism would be nice. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys after I do some editing and some more filming.